everybody, I'm Ross and this is my train room and today's video I do a lot of changes, modifications, um, overhaul and also a package of mine didn't arrive which I'm very sad but I got my money back at least. I hope you all had a great Christmas. Have yourselves a great new year coming up here soon. Otherwise, enjoy the show. So first things first, I'm going to dismantle this stuff off the back. I wish I didn't nail it in now but anywho. The fun part begins. Dismantling this back end here and praying everything readjusts up and the legs. I don't know what I was thinking when I was trying to make them crooked to match that. I should just made them flush in the first place. <sighs> I also just realized I gotta take off this one here in the back. There we go, that should now shift up and down freely. Like this, we're going to wait. That one too, and this one. The joys. Now here's the fun bit. I've got all the posts, except for that corner, completely unscrewed off. So now it's just a matter of taking my three levels here. This one's two level. And getting things readjusted. At the same time, to make sure that this is not wobbling around so much anymore. So after much tomfoolery, it's finally in position. It's good enough. It's level all around. And also, the path across is looking too bad. I mean, it's still a bit of a grade, but it's actually a lot better than it formerly was. And I don't want to mess around with this anymore. It's as level as it's going to get in between all the corners and centers, etc. And I'm leaving it there. Now with my lovely support uh, hole in the way, I'm going to reinstall the back ends. There we go, just like new. Now will my pass between the doors still fit? Hopefully I don't get in the way of the whole shot. Fitting a little loose. We'll fix that in a moment. Now. Ah. Over here. I'm gonna cheat here, grab my drill, grab my nut, washer. So yeah, it's not a not a terrible grade. It was worse before. Ugh. See, this could still get tighter over here. This needs to shift a little bit that way. Of course, I do have a bit of a gap on the brackets too. Okay, let's get some track. It's not my Bachman caboose, but it's still steel wheels. I mean, it's stopping on its own. So that's good. It's not doing that bad. So the next step to my plan is to take some of this leftover scrap, preferably the straighter side, and I'm going to make a little piece for underneath here 
fastened in place, so every time I were to set this back into place, I'm not fighting to hold it up. I've done that long enough, and I just want to make it as simple as possible. Um, some might argue a hinge system would work, but because the way it's set up with the foam, it's, um, it's not really going to work that way. So, anywho, I'm going to get started on this next bit. Apologies for the lighting, but there's the first one installed. And the second one. I went a little rough on that one and split it a little bit. Um, that's okay though, because some point in the future I got to thinking, I gotta run wires under here anyway. So eventually I'm gonna replace those with uh, more of these uh, L brackets. Just to help set in place, you know. And then I'll use these existing holes to run wires through. So now we get back to correcting another big whoopsie I made from my last video when I recorded. I forgot to measure six inches here for the turntable when the piece of track is supposed to go in place. And that was, uh, I know I said there's room for margins of errors and etc, but the margin of error was too great and it would have caused that piece of flex track going up to bend in and become tighter than 18 inch radius. And last I checked, most of my diesel locomotives won't do less than 18 inch radius curves. Um, the odd one will do 15 minimal. I think the smallest you can get is 15. Um, however, those other diesels wouldn't do it. And primarily this yard is going to house all those diesels and steam engines. So, yeah, it's going to be fixing this up. Also, on a side note, um, I won't be buying as much flex track as I thought I was. I'm probably going to order one pack, but by the time I pay for it, and spend 40 to 60 bucks on shipping. Yes, the US um, shipping rates are still ridiculously high, much like it was for that one um, roundhouse kit, but 60 bucks to ship it, just the one. Um, I'm gonna be ordering up a bunch of Atlas Snap Track, so all my turns or my radiuses will be, uh, what, did I, what did I change it to there on the on the plans? Basically the, yeah, the inner, the inner radius will be 22 inches. Well, the outer radiuses will be 24 inches. That all just fits comfortably and keeps everything still, you know, within boundaries and yada, yada, yada. And any spot that would need flex track, like really need it, would be the one coming off of here. There's going to be one or two piece, short pieces for the fiddle yard over there. Um, the back corner is going to need it until I meet up in the, um, where eventually the helix will be built. And a little bit over on this side, so I'm hoping one pack of flex track will cover all that. I'm hoping. So, um, otherwise, I'd have to go back, redo everything without the flex track. So, and I kind of want to have flex track to help pull away from any pretty static looking snap track, right? Which is not going to be the majority of this layout now. However, if there's any leftover bits from the important bits, I will definitely use them to help add like, you know, a little warm curve or something through a pass on this side or whatever else. But yeah, back to focusing on this. This piece of track here, I'm going to measure out six inches, mark it with a marker, and then I have my Dremel with me and I will zip that off. I really wanted to get my hands on Bachman's little... Uh, Dremel cutter tool benchwork thing because it's already got the jigs in place for track and different angles which makes things a lot easier. However, that's a 135 US price tag to save up for. What are those being Canadian dollars? Probably a fair bit. So freehand cut it's going to be and I'll do my best. So after trying to freehand Dremel this, um, my Dremel apparently discs aren't big enough and my Dremel is bigger than the discs in diameter, so I ended up finding a pair of um, side cutters, carefully cutting off six inches, then using the Dremel to smooth these ends out and go back over the file to clean those up, get those sharp edges off of there. And I'm hoping this should work. Slide it in, like so. And of course, double check the measurement here. It is indeed six inches. Be a thousandth of an inch short on one side, a little bit. Get this extra black track ties out of the way. And presto! So, this all this needs to come down a little more. Let's get these out of here. File back where I found it so I don't forget for next time. 
Oh, box cards out of the way. I'm using for um, diesels. So I want this flush to this edge here. Where's that small piece I had? It's not looking too bad. Now I'm debating whether if I want to recut some stuff out or not after the first um, mess up the fiasco. Because I mean, having an elevation isn't bad, but at the same time, having it kind of submerged also looked nice. And when I went to the roundhouse kit, there are side steps, right? And these little steps are featured above the terrain. I mean, I could modify to sit down some more. Uh, yeah. Because, I mean... Hmm. Let's get the rest of that roundhouse kit over. So, yeah, here's progress on the... Uh, on the roundhouse itself, looking good. Get that out of there. Another set for another a junction piece over there. If and when I get my hands on one, that's also a funny story. I ordered one back on November 30th on Amazon because it'll be the same price to ship it from the States anyway. And Amazon has paid three bucks, shipping's included. So, a lot of it's coming. Um, the seller transferred it over to the courier, and we got a tracking number. But after a whole month of waiting, it hasn't come in. Maybe I'll get lucky, it'll be on the 28th or something. But we have to be determined. Anywho, let's get this uh, steps in there. So yeah, that definitely changed the whole perspective, having it above the foam instead of in the foam and just trying to match with the rest of the track like I was originally trying to do. You know what? Maybe I will just leave this above the foam because I can always um, re-glue these down and then fill this in with, um, you know, like cheap um, tub surround silicone and stuff like that. But in the meantime, let me get this um, track made for these stalls, because that's part of the project today. And um, I'm going to put these together, run some wires actually, and see if this all works. And, well, I'm just glad this last little bit is over. I did measure twice, cut once, and my cuts came up a little short. I was aiming for four and a half inches, which I measured out, but it looks like I needed four and three quarters. But that's okay. Make do with what we got. Um, unfortunately, I can't find my, oh, uh, what do you call it again? Little sol solder, my soldering iron. And looking about the stuff I did pack last time with my folks, I think it's still in the attic by the uh, RC airplane I was building back in high school. It's almost complete, it just needs wings and mount the motor and some other things, but anyway, with that aside, um, I did dig out the dummy locomotive, and so far, everything seems to be A-OK, -okay, as this thing's about eight inches long. The roller stock I'm using, my longest ones are seven inches long. This is supposed to represent a 50-foot boxcar, I believe. And this one's the 40. Unless those are 30s, those are 40s, and I don't own a 50. I don't really say on them anywhere. No. But yeah, um, I've tried each, so the engine sits comfortably. You can close the doors too. But I'm leaving these doors open because some of them, the glue stuck to them, right? So. But yeah, and even then, I can always pull this track up, replace it later. But yeah, I can easily fit that locomotive in there, no problem. And that dip in the back isn't such a bad thing either, because it's, it's a little more of, oh, there's the end of the line. Keep your locomotive from jumping the track and going out the window. So unfortunately, I'll be calling it end here on this video. So thanks for watching, everybody. Um, next time, I'll hopefully have the flex track I need. I'm probably going to order a soldering iron because it'll be another year before I get mine. And I really want to get this all done. And hopefully some cork and some other things.
So take care. Have a great New Year's, and I hope you guys are all having a great uh, Boxing Day. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you next time.